Hey everybody, Anthony here. It is Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. And January is half over, guys. Have you been keeping your resolution? You know, your New Year's resolution? Going to the gym, eating right, taking care of yourself. Maybe uh, putting aside more uh, time to study God's Word. Uh, more time with family, more time with your wife, your spouse, your kids, loved ones. Um, time where you shut all devices off and just uh, listen to that still small voice. That's what I'm talking about, the New Year's resolutions. Okay, today's devotional that I put together from a compilation of studies that I have done recently and videos that I have watched, I have uh, entitled it, Stained by the World. This world that we live in, this system that we live in, that I talk about all the time, is a system that is capable of staining you. That box that we all have in many rooms in our house called the tell lie vision, tell lies vision, tell lie vision, has been in American homes, what, since the 40s maybe? Um, the late 40s, I think. That box are uh, people that control the media and everybody else behind them can direct and send you through that box uh, lies, half-truths, or different signals or shows or, or programs that they want you uh, to be on the same page with them about. And many people follow those lies and they get molded and shaped and their minds are made ready or stained by this world system. And so that can lead down a path of unrighteousness. It could lead down a path of destruction. It could lead down, lead down a path that's, uh, you think you're following the truth because you're watching the news and all these different programs on TV and um, you think that they're telling you the truth and meanwhile they're leading you to destruction. So that's just one area and it's a big area that is capable of staining you. The world is capable of staining you. Okay, so we're going to look at some scripture today and uh, I'm going to read some of it. We're going to read through or from the Hallelujah scriptures um, and we're going to start out Today's main scripture verse is in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 17, verse 14 through 20. So let, let me read that, and then we'll start the uh, devotional. So this is um, Jesus, Yahusha, talking here. I have, this is his high, part of his high priestly prayer in John chapter 17. He says, I have given them your word, and the world hated them because they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. Verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the wicked. They are not of the world, as I am not of the world. Verse 17, Kodesh them, or uh, separate them. Kodesh them uh, in your truth. Sanctify, in other words. Sanctify them in your truth, he's saying. Your word is truth. Remember that, what he's saying here. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Uh, as you sent me into the world, this is Yahushua, Jesus, talking to the Father. As you've sent me into the world, I also send them into the world. And for them, I Kodesh myself, so that they too might be Kodesh in truth. Uh, sanctify. In verse 20. And I do not pray for these alone. So he do, does not pray for his disciples alone, but also for those believing in me through their word. Okay? Verse 20 says. So, let's get my notes here. <clears throat> so, in John 17, 17, he says, Kodesh, Kodesh them in your truth. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. Yahushua came to do everything the Father sent him to do. John 17, 4. I have esteemed you on earth, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. 
he says, All whom the Father gave to Yahushua, they guarded his word. They um, guarded, they relied on it, they held to it, they held it in high regard, his word. It was everything. They guarded it. It's like um, a group of soldiers guarding one prisoner. You guard that word. That word is is not getting away. It has to be there. It has to stay there. The word does not go away. Think about it that way. John 17, 6 says, I have revealed your name. Yahushua says, I have re revealed your name, Yahuwah, meaning the Father, to the men who you gave me out of the world. You see? Even though they were living in the world, God the Father took them out of the world, spiritually speaking, and gave them to the Son to mold and to shape and to uh, receive the good news and to carry that good news throughout the generations, the gospel message out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have guarded my word. John 17, 6. They, all of them, have guarded my word, he says. That word guarded in the Strong's is G5083. Terejo, terejo. It means to attend to carefully, to take care of, to guard, to observe, or to undergo something. They attended to the word, which would be the Tanakh, the Torah, carefully. Okay, they followed it carefully. They didn't disregard it. Just because Jesus was there with them, they didn't disregard everything. He fulfilled the word. He didn't do away with the word. What stains the world? First question, what stains the world? In Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32, if you read that piece of scripture in context, we're going to look at verse 28 through 31. What stains the world? So, this is the Apostle Paul speaking in verse 28 of chapter 1 in Romans. And even as they did not think it worthwhile to possess the knowledge of Elohim, okay, Elohim gave them over to a worthless mind or a depraved mind, a reprobate mind, a, de, um, a worthless mind, to do what is improper, he says. Having been filled with all what's improper. He's going to list it here starting in verse 29. And think about each one of these words that I'm going to talk about. We're not going to give definition for every one of them. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, but you could look each one up. I did that. In fact, I have a study where I did each one of those wor these words, looked up, gave the meaning, and uh, kind of drove home the point of what we all were at one time. He's talking about those that did not think it worthwhile. So most of the world, uh, Paul says, that does not think it worthwhile to possess the knowledge of Elohim, of God. They don't think it's worthwhile. Everything else is more important. Their stock portfolio, their husband, their wife, uh, their kids... Uh, their car, their job, money, goals, resolutions, empty resolutions. Those are all more important. It's not worthwhile. God, I'll put God in my back pocket. He, I'll save him for when I really need him, like a spare tire. Having been filled with all, verse 29, unrighteousness, whoring, wickedness, greed, evil, filled with envy, murder, fighting, deceit, evil habits, Whisperers, verse 30 goes on, slanderers, haters of Elohim, haters of God, God haters, insolent, proud, boasters, divisors of evil. And we've seen a lot of that the last four years. People who have devised evil schemes and evil plans and put them forth as something good. Disobedient to parents, we see that. Actually, we see that being pushed in our institutions, our schools and colleges, the teachers, the academia, uh, and all the way from uh, pre-K up to graduate school, push the, um, the, um, to be disobedient to parents. And you could, do, you could do this or that and don't have to tell your parents. They're not important. 
Just listen to what we say, the, the state. Without discernment, covenant breakers. Nobody wants to keep covenant anymore. They think it's nothing. Oh, I don't have to keep covenant. I'm not in covenant with God. I don't have to keep that. That that's the old guys. That's the that's for the Jews. Unloving, unforgiving, ruthless. How does a believer remain unstained? So somebody that's a believer, a professed person who uh, is born again, who's repented of their sin, who's following Torah, who's following the commandments, who's doing what the word says, just like we've read in John in our opening scripture in John. Okay, uh, how does a believer remain unstained? Well, James 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 21 through 27, a believer receives with meekness the implanted word which is able to save their lives. He talks, James talks about that in t verse 21. A believer receives with meekness the implanted word, the truth, which is able to save their lives. Um, in uh, Luke chapter 11, I'll read it here, verse 27 through 28. This is Yahusha speaking. And it came to be as he was saying, saying this, a certain woman from the crowd, this is verse 27, raised her voice and said to him, <clears throat> excuse me, Baruch, or blessed, is the womb that bore you and the breasts which you nursed on. This is this woman blurts out to Jesus. Jesus responds, it says, but he said, this is Yahusha speaking back, Baruch, or blessed, rather are those hearing the word of Yahuwah and keeping it. He says, no, never mind. Bless is the womb and the breast that I uh, suckled upon, but Baruch, or bless, blessed rather, are those hearing the word of Yahuwah, of my Father, and keeping it. Not just hearing and doing something else, or hearing and not doing, just hearing and not doing anything, but doing it and keeping it, he says. We are blessed when we hear and when we do. Okay? That's what we are. That's what Jesus is saying there. That's how a believer remains unstained in the world. Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Jesus says this. Uh, this is a key passage of Scripture. It's very um, uh, important for people who are professed believers to go back and read this, especially in the context of the Sermon on the Mount and that whole, uh, you know, all those chapters in, in the book of Matthew. Um, not everyone who says to me, Adonai, Adonai, or your Bibles might say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the reign of the Shamayim. Shamayim is heaven. But he who is doing the desire of my Father in the Shamayim. Many shall say to me, many, he says, in that day, this is that day, the day of judgment, Adonai, Adonai, Lord, Lord. When he says that twice, it should tickle a little, ring a little bell in our heads. Adonai, Adonai, have we not <clears throat> Navu or prophesied in your name and cast out demons uh, in your name and done many mighty works in your name? Verse 23, and I shall declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Your Bible might say iniquity, it's lawlessness or Torahlessness. In 1 John 3, 4, the Apostle John gives the definition of sin. Everyone doing sin also does lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Without Torah, breaking Torah, not keeping Torah. What did we just say that Jesus says? Keeping the word, keeping the truth is what is important. Deuteronomy 6, 14 through 18. These are all scriptures you should be writing down, going back and studying, and then comparing them to what you're being taught in many churches today. Do not go after other mighty ones, 
the mighty ones of the peoples who are all around you. So verse 14 of Deuteronomy 6, do not go after other gods, other gods who are not really gods at all, um, who the people all around you are seeking. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is a jealous El, a jealous God. In your midst, he's not far away. He's a jealous God. In your midst, he's amongst us. He's not way, way far away where he doesn't hear anything. He knows every hair on our head, the Bible says, the scripture says. He knows our thoughts, the intentions of our hearts. He knows us through and through. He knows what we're going to pray before we pray it. He's not far away. For Yahuwah your Elohim is a jealous El in your midst, lest the displeasure of Yahuwah your Elohim burn against you. Then he shall destroy you from the face of the earth. Verse 15. Verse 16. Do not try Yahuwah your Elohim as you tried him in Massah. Don't test him. Don't put him to the test. Um, verse 17. Diligently guard the commands of Yahuwah, your Elohim, and his witnesses, the commands, his witnesses, and his laws, which he has commanded you. Verse 18, and you shall do what is right and good in the eyes of Yahuwah, that, you might, that it might be well with you, and you shall go in and possess the good land of which Yahuwah swore to your fathers. This is a warning he gave them to be Kodesh, to be separate from the unbelieving world. And at the same time, you're a beacon and a light to them. But being separate means you're keeping and following my statutes, my witnesses, my Torah, my right rulings, my commandments, my word. That's what he's telling them. So it might go good for you and you might come into the land that I swore to give your fathers. And in the end, that you might come into the gates into the new Jerusalem that he swears to give those who are his diligent followers. He requires obedience. He has told us how we are to honor him. Scripture gives us the prescription of how we are to honor him. Not how most honor him today, by keeping false feasts, um, by disregarding his commands, or saying, oh, they're... The easy out is, oh, they're for the Jews. Changing dates and times. Example, in Leviticus 23, 4-6, it gives us the dates of the Passover. Never Easter. The church took a feast that they were supposed to be celebrating and honoring, commanded or thought up of another feast, called it Easter, changed the date, and now honor that feast in place of Passover. That's what he's talking about. Following other mighty ones. Other false gods. Men teaching doctrines of men. False teachings. That's what the word is talking about. Making their own idols. Exodus 32. Go back and read Exodus 32. What did the um, people do? They fashioned their own idol and began worshiping it in place of the one true Elohim, the golden calf. Mountaintop fact, or a mountaintop moment here. You cannot follow the ways and traditions of men, and at the same time claim allegiance to Yahushua. You cannot follow doctrines of men, falsehood, false teachings, and still claim that you are in allegiance on following Yahushua. Big point here. See John, see First John three and four, chapter three, verse four. Sin is lawlessness. That's the definition. Lawlessness is Torahlessness. The man of sin, the Antichrist, when he comes, the word, the Scripture calls him the man of lawlessness. Satan. He's the man of lawlessness. This Antichrist figure. Torahlessness. He's going to do the opposite of what the Torah says. He's going to follow his father, who is Satan, law, his law. Yet people will still say, but I love him, meaning Jesus. 
And he does not care that I go to church on a different day or Sunday or whether I celebrate on the Sabbath. As long as um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being true and my heart is in the right place, uh, and I could celebrate all these other feasts. But my heart is in the right place. Following his laws and commandments are scriptural. We are commanded, even in the new covenant, to follow his commandments. And by who? Not just the apostles, the disciples, who did follow them. In the book of Acts, 85 times alone, you see them following, uh, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the dietary laws, keeping the feasts. John 14, 21, He who possesses my commands and guards them, I'm reading from him, hallelujah, scriptures, all this scripture. Um, he who possesses, okay, possesses, who knows and do, does the commandments and guards them. It is he who loves me and he who loves me shall be loved by my Father and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. See how important this is? How important it is to know what the word says and not just have a talking point or I don't have to do that anymore. I'm free from that. Uh, all I have to do is believe. John 15, 10. Jesus, Yahushua says, if, we talked about if in another video, it's a big word. If you guard or keep my commands, you shall stay in my love, even as, even as I have guarded my Father's commands and stay in his love. If, if you don't, then what? You're not in his love. You're not part of his team. 2 John 1, 4 through 6, the Apostle John says this, I, regard, I rejoiced greatly because I found some of your children walking in truth as we received the command from the Father. Verse 5, And now I ask you, Curia, not as though I wrote a fresh command to you, but that which we have heard from the beginning, and that we love, that we love one another. John's not giving her a new command and saying everything else has been erased. He's saying, no, we've had it from the beginning. I'm refreshing you, uh, Curia, not as though I wrote a fresh command to you, but that which you have heard from the beginning, that we love one another. Verse 6, And this is the love, that we walk according to his commands. What does walk, does walk mean you're stationary, that you're just staying still? Walk means you're taking action. You're doing the word like James says, Yaakov says, you are doers of the word and not just hearers only. Because when you look in the mirror, you don't see the same person if you read those uh, passages in James. This is the command that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it, John tells her. Follow it, adhere to it, keep it, guard it. Action, doing. Belief or faith and works go together. Belief, your faith, and works go together. They go together. They make a believer complete. There's a big difference of saying, I'm saved by grace, and then do nothing to prove that you're saved by grace. Yes, you're saved by grace through faith alone, of course. But if you just say that, it's just lip service. You have to there has to be fruit within your life as a believer in Yahushua, Jesus, okay? Obedience to his commands, Yah's commands, is the fruit or the proof that you love him. We believers are saved by his grace, and so by faith or belief, if we believe, then we are received. There could be a false confession, uh, a um, lip service only. Just because you raise your hand, walk an aisle, uh, say you love Jesus, you say you're sorry for uh, your sin, and then you go, a person goes and lives their life as if nothing has changed, 
is not true saving faith. There's a big difference. What problem do you have with his commands? That's my question to many. What problem do you have with his commands? When you say you love Yahusha and then choose to live contrary to his word and do not follow him as he demonstrated to us, you are a liar. 1 John 2, 4. The one who says I know him. This is not me talking. This is scripture talking. The one who says, I know him, and does not guard his commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The one who says, I know him, and then says, I don't have to keep any of his commands, he died for that. And does not guard his commands, it says, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. How much um, do you have to delve into that to understand what it says? Is it hard to understand what John just said in 1 John 2, 4? No, it's not hard. You just got to open your, open your eyes, open your heart, understand maybe you've made a mistake, maybe you've been going down the wrong road, and you, you need to change and follow his commands. John 15, 10. Go back and we read what John 15, 10 said. There are commands we live by. These are commands that we live by. It is not how we justify ourselves. We're not justified or made right with God by keeping and doing and, and we don't earn it. But it proves who we are. It's how we show our love for him. How the world knows who we are. How does the world know you're different from everybody else? How? How are the people that are going to be coming after you as a believer and persecuting you for the word know who you are if you're not following his word, his commandments? The apostate church today claims to love God but rejects his Torah and what he says. The apostate church today claims to love God, but yet rejects his Torah, his law, his witness, his statutes, his father's commands that Jesus fulfilled and did, and his apostles did and followed, and the early church did and followed. So what's the hard, what's so hard about it? What's, what's the, um, <laughs> what problem do you have with it? Going back to our question. There should never be an argument about following his commands. Influence by the enemy is causing many people to miss Yah's will for their lives. The influence of the enemy, how he, how the serpent weasels his way in and slithers in to church, to church, to doctrine, to teaching, and changes this a little bit. No, you don't have to believe that. No, he didn't really mean that. You you could do this, Eve. He didn't really mean you're going to die. You know, you're going to know more. You're going to know everything when you eat the fruit. Surely you don't think you're going to die. Same same thing today. He's saying the same thing to the apostate the apostate church. And they're taking the fruit. Now, am I saying every church is apostate? I'm saying the apostate church that teaches that the commands are done away with and you don't have to follow them. We're showing you through Scripture that they're not. The devil promotes the doctrine of the church today to not follow his commands. Mountaintop moment for us. Yahuwah has never chastised his people or his children for following what he commanded. I keep the Sabbath, the dietary laws. Um, is it all perfect? No. I'm keeping his commands. Will I be chastised? Will he say, how dare you keep my Sabbath that I created on the seventh day for man, for you? How dare you keep it? No, that's ludicrous to even think that. We're blessed because we keep it. He knows we're in covenant with him because we keep it. 
the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will never go against what Scripture, what the Scriptures say. John 14, 26 says this. This is our Adon, our Lord, our Savior speaking. Understand who's speaking here. These are from the lips of the Savior, Messiah, who you and I claim is our Savior, who we are clinging to for eternal life and not to be and not to perish in the lake of fire, who died for us, our sin, our sinfulness, who died for us individually, personally. That's why it's a personal relationship. But the Helper, he's talking about the Ruach HaKodesh, he says, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, that lives in a believer is not going to lead you into falsehood. He's not going to lead you into falsehood. Jesus is telling us right here. He's going, he shall teach you. It doesn't say he might teach you, or he sometimes will teach you. He shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said. Ask yourself this. After the Torah was given, name one person that Yahuwah considered righteous that did not keep the commandments. There are no examples of this in Scripture. The Apostle Paul, many people will say the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul kept the law, kept the commandments. His writings are difficult to understand, Peter says in 2 Peter 3. And one can be confused of Paul's writings because he goes back and forth between the law of sin and death, the law that leads to death and separation from the Most High, and the law of liberty, the law of peace, the law of the, the Torah, there's different times he uses, goes back and forth, and it's easy to get confused to what Paul was talking about. Paul followed Torah and taught the same. Those in the apostate church use this doctrine of lawlessness because they want to accept Yah's gift of grace while not showing him the love he asked for. We want, we want, we want, but yet we don't want to give back. Okay, And I'm not saying this in a bad way because I fell into this category at one part of my life. And I have uh, a video of my testimony and you probably have the same if you are a believer of how you were taken out of this, these false teachings and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh illuminated you and uh, taught you and reminded you, hey, Anthony, you're... You're not, you're not, you want to be grafted in as a Gentile into, into my, into the belief. You want to be grafted in into the uh, Yahudim, the Hebrew root, <clears throat> the Yahud, the root. You want to be grafted in. You got to do the same thing. You're adopted in. It's as if you're one of them. You have to do the same thing. You're not exempt. It's the opposite. Mountaintop moment. If you reject his covenant and the truth of his word, you are an apostate and you need to repent. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the entire matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the entire matter. Revere Elohim and guard his commands, for this is to all mankind. Revere Yah and guard his commands. For Elohim, God, shall bring every work into right ruling. You're going to be judged. All the work is going to be judged by what? The Torah, the right rulings. Read Psalm 119. You'll get a good picture of what he's talking about here, what Solomon's talking about here. Including all that is hidden, 
whether good or whether evil. Rid yourself of the stain that comes from living as the world lives. Rid yourself of the stain. Be separate. Come out of it. Come out of the world. Come out of apostate churches. Revelation 18.4, I'm closing on this verse. <clears throat> and I heard another voice from the Shamaim from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Sin, lawlessness, and plagues of this world system that stains people and keeps them from knowing the one true Elohim. Yah bless. Go back. Review the scriptures we talked about. Make it your resolution this year to come out and to worship in spirit and in truth. Yah bless everybody. Take care. Anthony signing off.